Smiling Buddha Maya designation, Pokhran I, was the assigned code name of India's first successful nuclear bomb test on 18 May 1974. The bomb was detonated on the Army Base, Pokhran Test Range PTR, in Rajasthan by the Indian Army under the supervision of several key Indian generals. Pokhran I was also the first confirmed nuclear weapons test by a nation outside the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Officially, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs Maya claimed this test was a peaceful nuclear explosion, but it was an accelerated nuclear program. History Topic. Topic. Early origins, 1944–1960s Topic. India started its own nuclear program in 1944 when Homi Jahangir Baba founded the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Physicist Raja Ramana played an essential role in nuclear weapons technology research. He expanded and supervised scientific research on nuclear weapons and was the first directing officer of the small team of scientists that supervised and carried out the test. After Indian independence from the British Empire, Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru authorized the development of a nuclear program headed by Homi Baba. The Atomic Energy Act of 1948 focused on peaceful development. India was heavily involved in the development of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but ultimately opted not to sign it. We must develop this atomic energy quite apart from war, indeed I think we must develop it for the purpose of using it for peaceful purposes. Of course, if we are compelled as a nation to use it for other purposes, possibly no pious sentiments of any of us will stop the nation from using it that way. In 1954, Homi Jahangir Baba steered the nuclear program in the direction of weapons design and production. Two important infrastructure projects were commissioned. The first established Trombay Atomic Energy Establishment at Mumbai Bombay. The other created a governmental secretariat, Department of Atomic Energy Day, of which Baba was the first secretary. From 1954 to 1959, the nuclear program grew swiftly. By 1958, the day had one-third of the defence budget for research purposes. In 1954, India reached a verbal understanding with Canada and the United States under the Atoms for Peace program. Canada and the United States ultimately agreed to provide and establish the Cirrus Research Reactor also at Trombay. The acquisition of Cirrus was a watershed event in nuclear proliferation with the understanding between India and the United States that the reactor would be used for peaceful purposes only. Cirrus was an ideal facility to develop a plutonium device, and therefore Nehru refused to accept nuclear fuel from Canada and started the program to develop an indigenous nuclear fuel cycle. In July 1958, Nehru authorized Project Phoenix to build a reprocessing plant with a capacity of 20 tons of fuel a year, a size to match the production capacity of Cirrus. The plant used the Purex process and was designed by the American firm Vitro International. Construction of the plutonium plant began at Trombay on 27 March 1961, and it was commissioned in mid-1964. The nuclear program continued to mature, and by 1960, Nehru made the critical decision to move the program into production. At about the same time, Nehru held discussions with the American firm Westinghouse Electric to construct India's first nuclear power plant in Tarapur, Maharashtra. Kenneth Nichols, a U.S. Army engineer, recalls from a meeting with Nehru. It was that time when Nehru turned to Baba and asked Baba for the timeline of the development of a nuclear weapon. Baba estimated he would need about a year to accomplish the task. By 1962, the nuclear program was still developing, but at a slow rate. Nehru was distracted by the Sino-Indian War, during which India lost territory to China. Nehru turned to the Soviet Union for help, but the Soviet Union was preoccupied with the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet Politburo turned down Nehru's request for arms and continued backing the Chinese. India concluded that the Soviet Union was an unreliable ally, and this conclusion strengthened India's determination to create a nuclear deterrent. Design work began in 1965 under Baba and proceeded under Raja Ramana who took over the program after the former's death. Weapons development, 1967-72 Topic. 
Baba was now aggressively lobbying for nuclear weapons and made several speeches on Indian radio. In 1964, Baba told the Indian public via Indian radio that, "...such nuclear weapons are remarkably cheap," and supported his arguments by referring to the economical cost of American nuclear testing program plowshare. Baba stated to the politicians that a 10 knots device would cost around $350,000, and $600,000 for a two-mount. From this, he estimated that, "...a stockpile." of around 50 atomic bombs would cost under $21 million and a stockpile of 52 megaton hydrogen bombs would cost around $31.5 million. Baba did not realize, however, that the U.S. plowshare cost figures were produced by a vast industrial complex costing tens of billions of dollars, which had already manufactured nuclear weapons numbering in the tens of thousands. The delivery systems for nuclear weapons typically cost several times as much as the weapons themselves. The nuclear program was partially slowed down when Lal Bahadur Shastri became the Prime Minister. In 1965, Shastri faced another war with Pakistan. Shastri appointed physicist Vikram Sarabhai as the head of the nuclear program but because of his Gandhian beliefs Sarabhai directed the program toward peaceful purposes rather than military development. In 1967, Indira Gandhi became the prime minister and work on the nuclear program resumed with renewed vigor. Homi Sethna, a chemical engineer, played a significant role in the development of weapon-grade plutonium while Ramana designed and manufactured the whole nuclear device. The first nuclear bomb project did not employ more than 75 scientists because of its sensitivity. The nuclear weapons program was now directed towards the production of plutonium rather than uranium. In 1968 69, P. K. Iyengar visited the Soviet Union with three colleagues and toured the nuclear research facilities at Dubna, Russia. During his visit, Iyengar was impressed by the plutonium fueled pulsed fast reactor. Upon his return to India, Iyengar set about developing plutonium reactors approved by the Indian political leadership in January 1969. The secret plutonium plant was known as Purnima, and construction began in March 1969. The plant's leadership included Iyengar, Ramana, Homi Sethna, and Sarabhai. Sarabhai S. presence indicates that, with or without formal approval, the work on nuclear weapons at Trombay had been commenced. Topic. Secrecy and test preparations, 1972–74 India continued to harbour ambivalent feelings about nuclear weapons, and accorded low priority to their production until the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. In December 1971, Richard Nixon sent a carrier battle group led by the USS Enterprise CVN into the Bay of Bengal in an attempt to intimidate India. The Soviet Union responded by sending a submarine armed with nuclear missiles from Vladivostok to trail the U.S. task force. The Soviet response demonstrated the deterrent value and significance of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile submarines to Indira Gandhi. India gained the military and political initiative over Pakistan after acceding to the treaty that divided Pakistan into two different political entities. On 7 September 1972, near the peak of her post war popularity, Indira Gandhi authorized the Baba Atomic Research Center to manufacture a nuclear device and prepare it for a test. Although the Indian Army was not fully involved in the nuclear testing, the Army's highest command was kept fully informed of the test preparations. The preparations were carried out under the watchful eyes of the Indian political leadership, with civilian scientists assisting the Indian Army. The device was formally called the peaceful nuclear explosive, but it was usually referred to as the smiling Buddha. The device was detonated on 18 May 1974, Buddha Janti, a festival day in India marking the birth of Gautama Buddha. Indira Gandhi maintained tight control of all aspects of the preparations of the Smiling Buddha test, which was conducted in extreme secrecy. Besides Gandhi, only advisors Parmeshwar Haksar and Durga Dar were kept informed. Scholar Raj Changapa asserts the Indian Defence Minister Jagjivan Ram was not provided with any knowledge of this test and came to learn of it only after it was conducted. Swaran Singh, the Minister of External Affairs, was given 48 hours advance notice. The Indira Gandhi administration employed no more than 75 civilian scientists while General G. G. Biwar, Indian Army Chief, and the commander of Indian Western Command were the only military commanders kept informed. 
Topic: <laughs> Development teams and sites. Topic: The head of this entire nuclear bomb project was the director of the BARC, Raja Ramana. In later years, his role in the nuclear program would be more deeply integrated as he remained head of the nuclear program most of his life. The designer and creator of the bomb was P. K. Iyengar, who was the second in command of this project. Iyengar's work was further assisted by the chief metallurgist, Archa Dambaram, and by Nagapatnam Sambasiva Venkatasan of the Terminal Ballistics Research Laboratory, who developed and manufactured the high explosive implosion system. The explosive materials and the detonation system were developed by Waman Datatriya Patwardhan of the High Energy Materials Research Laboratory. The overall project was supervised by chemical engineer Homi Sethna, chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission of India. Chidambaram, who would later coordinate work on the Pokhran II tests, began work on the equation of state of plutonium in late 1967 or early 1968. To preserve secrecy, the project employed no more than 75 scientists and engineers from 1967 to 74. Abdul Kalam also arrived at the test site as the representative of the DRDO. The device was of the implosion type design and had a close resemblance to the American nuclear bomb called the Fat Man. The implosion system was assembled at the Terminal Ballistics Research Laboratory of the DRDO in Chandigarh. The detonation system was developed at the High Energy Materials Research Laboratory of the DRDO in Pune, Maharashtra state. The 6 kg of plutonium came from the Cirrus reactor at BARC. The neutron initiator was of the polonium-beryllium type and code named FLOWER. The complete nuclear bomb was engineered and finally assembled by Indian engineers at Trombay before transportation to the test site. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Nuclear weapon design. Topic: Topic: Cross section. Topic. The fully assembled device had a hexagonal cross section, 1.25 meters in diameter, and weighed 1400 kg. The device was mounted on a hexagonal metal tripod, and was transported to the shaft on rails which the army kept covered with sand. The device was detonated when Dastadar pushed the firing button at 8.05 am, it was in a shaft 107 meters under the army Pokhran test range in the Thar Desert or Great Indian Desert, Rajasthan. Topic. Controversy regarding the yield Topic. The nuclear yield of this test still remains controversial, with unclear data provided by Indian sources, although Indian politicians have given the country's press a range from 2 knots to 20 knots. The official yield was initially set at 12 knots, post-operation Shakti claims have raised it to 13 knots. Independent seismic data from outside and analysis of the crater features indicate a lower figure. Analysts usually estimate the yield at 4 to 6 knots, using conventional seismic magnitude to yield conversion formulas. In recent years, both Homi Sethna and P. K. Iyengar have conceded the official yield to be an exaggeration. Iyengar has variously stated that the yield was 8 to 10 knots, that the device was designed to yield 10 knots, and that the yield was 8 knots. Exactly as predicted. Although seismic scaling laws lead to an estimated yield range between 3.2 knots and 21 knots, an analysis of hard rock cratering effects suggests a narrow range of around 8 knots for the yield, which is within the uncertainties of the seismic yield estimate. Aftermath Domestic reaction Topic. Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had already gained much popularity and publicity after her successful military campaign against Pakistan in the 1971 war. The test caused an immediate revival of Indira Gandhi's popularity, which had flagged considerably from its high after the 1971 war. The overall popularity and image of the Congress Party was enhanced and the Congress Party was well received in the Indian Parliament. 
In 1975, Homi Sethna, a chemical engineer and the chairman of the Indian Atomic Energy Commission AECI, Raja Ramana of BARC, and Basanti Nagchaudhuri of DRDO, all were honoured with the Padma Vibhushan, India's second highest civilian award. Five other project members received the Padma Shri, India's fourth highest civilian award. India consistently maintained that this was a peaceful nuclear bomb test and that it had no intentions of militarizing its nuclear program. However, according to independent monitors, this test was part of an accelerated Indian nuclear program. In 1997 Raja Ramana, speaking to the Press Trust of India, maintained, The Pokhran test was a bomb, I can tell you now. An explosion is an explosion, a gun is a gun, whether you shoot at someone or shoot at the ground. I just want to make clear that the test was not all that peaceful. Topic: International reaction. Topic: While India continued to state that the test was for peaceful purposes, it encountered opposition from many quarters. The Nuclear Suppliers Group (NSG) was formed in reaction to the Indian tests to check international nuclear proliferation. The NSG decided in 1992 to require full-scope IAEA safeguards for any new nuclear export deals, which effectively ruled out nuclear exports to India, but in 2008 it waived this restriction on nuclear trade with India as part of the Indo-US Civilian Nuclear Agreement. <laughs> Pakistan Pakistan did not view the test as a peaceful nuclear explosion and cancelled talks scheduled for 10 June on normalization of relations. Pakistan's Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto vowed in June 1974 that he would never succumb to nuclear blackmail or accept Indian hegemony or domination over the subcontinent. The chairman of the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission, Munir Ahmed Khan, said that the test would force Pakistan to test its own nuclear bomb. Pakistan's leading nuclear physicist, Pervez Hoodboy, stated in 2011 that he believed the test pushed Pakistan further into the nuclear arena. <laughs> Canada and United States The plutonium used in the test was created in the Cirrus reactor supplied by Canada and using heavy water supplied by the United States. Both countries reacted negatively, especially in light of then ongoing negotiations on the Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty and the economic aid both countries had provided to India. Canada concluded that the test violated a 1971 understanding between the two states, and froze nuclear energy assistance for the two heavy water reactors then under construction. The United States concluded that the test did not violate any agreement and proceeded with a June 1974 shipment of enriched uranium for the Terrapa reactor. France France sent a congratulatory telegram to India but later withdrew it. Subsequent nuclear explosions Topic. Despite many proposals, India did not carry out further nuclear tests until 1998. After the 1998 general elections, Operation Shakti also known as Pokhran II was carried out at the Pokhran test site, using devices designed and built over the preceding two decades. Topic. See also Topic. India and weapons of mass destruction History of nuclear weapons List of countries with nuclear weapons Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic External links Topic. 